Okay, let's talk about passing algebra with an A. So yes, you can absolutely get an A uh, in algebra if you work hard and do the right things, and that's what this video is about. I'm gonna uh, lay out five specific areas that you really need to be uh, checking yourself uh, on uh, as these are basically indicators. If you're doing these things, all right, you're probably have a 99% chance of getting a 99% in algebra, which would be like an A plus, okay? Any student can excel in algebra, but it doesn't happen by luck. It doesn't happen by just hoping to get a good grade. You have to be doing the right things, and that's what this video is going to be uh, discussing. Now, um, of course, if you're watching this video, I assume that you probably are taking an algebra course, but maybe you're taking pre-algebra, algebra two, college algebra, some other course like that, this will apply to you. Uh, matter of fact, this will apply to almost basically any math course. All right, so uh, before we get into this, let me uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. And yes, you guessed it, I am also a middle and high school math teacher. Okay, so I've been teaching for decades, so I know what I'm talking about. Everything I'm going to tell you here today in this video comes from long years of experience. Now, uh, with that being said, I want to just let you know that I actually offer my own algebra course, full video-based uh, course, but I have many other courses. So whether you need to take algebra or need help with your current algebra course in, in terms of the instruction and the problems, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description. You can check that out. It's a very, very powerful uh, program. So that's a resource for you. Uh, another resource that I offer are notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video, which include algebra notes. Okay, so you can check out these things as well. I'm not going to speak too much about notes right now because I want to get into that with the uh, five items that I want to discuss. So let's get right to it. So I kind of like uh, black these out here just for a second, just so we can focus on one at a time. So let's get to our first one, and that is great notes. You have to take great notes. Um, if you're going to do well in math, okay? Uh, and, you know, oftentimes I would get, um, well, not oftentimes, many, many, many times, I would get students that would be sad and they're like, yeah, I have a D plus, I'm failing my class, and, you know, I'm not doing well. And, of course, I'd be uh, trying to help this student, talking to the parents, et cetera, uh, trying to convince them, hey, let me see your notes. How are you doing with your notes? And their notes would be like, you know, sloppy, no notes, and you know, it's like one of these things, like you have to take excellent notes. This is probably one of the most, if you, if you just walk away from the video now and get this part right, you're probably going to get an A in algebra, okay? And it just comes from years and years of experience. You absolutely have to work hard at taking great notes because when you take notes, all right, let's just kind of do it this way. How does that happen? Well, it's evidence of you engaging with what the teacher is teaching, okay? The only way you can get notes, you know, good stuff into your notes, where you can actually study from, uh, is by watching a teacher, paying attention to the teacher, focusing, getting that information and transferring down on, on paper. All this is increasing your retention and understanding. It's just hugely important, all right? So I don't think I need to belabor this uh, point anymore. This is non-negotiable. If you don't have excellent notes, you, I mean, there's probably very, very few students that could uh, do well, but that's like, you know, a rare exception, okay? So uh, the easiest thing you could do for yourself is to put in the work. And I think that's the problem is uh, creating excellent notes is work. And sometimes students think to themselves, well, I don't want to do the extra work. I'd rather just sit comfortably in my chair, watch the teacher teach, and just, you know, pay attention, you know, because if I take notes, then I'm distracted on what the teacher is saying. Well, nothing can be further from um, uh, the truth. You have to work at taking notes, and it is work because you have to pay attention to the teacher, and you know, you've got to be writing at the same time, okay? So that can be difficult, but the more you master that skill, and it is a skill, the better off you're going to be, okay? All right, so enough about notes. That is our first uh, major items item. And our next one is do all the homework, okay? So do all the homework. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means when your teacher assigns you 
you know, uh, 10 problems, okay, for homework, that you don't do seven, okay, just to get enough credit for the homework. You do all the homework problems, even the ones that you struggle with. You try all the ones. You're like, okay, I can't do this one. I'll skip it. Uh, these are easy. I'll just do a little bit of this. Do all the homework problems, not half of them. Do all of them because you may not know this, but most, you know, I'm speaking in generalities here, but most test questions and quiz questions come from the homework. Okay, the teach teachers, math teachers love to reward students for uh, putting in the work. Okay, so if you understand all the homework questions, all right, even if you don't get them right, okay, but if you've attempted them, you these are the type of uh, questions that are going to show up on your test and quizzes. All right, I'm just telling you right now, the things that are going to show up on your test and quizzes are going to come from primarily from homework questions and examples that your uh, your teachers laid out in the class and that should be in your notes. So if you're doing, if you understand all these uh, type of problems, you, you're you gonna be covered for at least 90% of the test questions, okay? Now, let's say you're doing your homework uh, problems and you don't understand this, this, or this. Okay, I get that, right? You attempt it and you really struggle. You really, I mean, you got to have to really work at it. You can't just be like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Well. You got to reference your notes. Your teacher isn't going to assign homework problems that you shouldn't be able to do if you're paying attention in class. So um, you got to pay attention to the problems you don't understand. Then the next day or whenever you have your math class again, you ask your teacher, hey, I didn't understand this. I don't understand that. And you, you know, uh, fill in the gaps, if you will. OK. All right. Let's move on to our next uh, item. And that is never fall behind. Now, this is kind of a hard one, obviously, but what do I mean by that? Well, here's the deal. Let's say we have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, whatever the case is, and you end up, for whatever reason, bombing on chapter three, okay? You get a C minus, all right? Or you really struggle with this chapter, okay? Well, that can happen, okay? And even though you have one bad chapter test or you know quiz or something like that doesn't mean it's the end of the world with your grade i think a lot of students sometimes when they fail a test they lose their motivation to want to get a top grade you can recover from having you know maybe one or two bad chapter tests you can recover from them and still get an a in your class but you can't fall behind now what do i mean by that well falling behind is not you getting a bad uh, test grade that can possibly happen and that's not the end of the world. What is going to be detrimental is if you don't do something about fixing that, okay, situation. Now, when you get a bad test grade, something happened, okay? You either had a bad test day or you didn't really understand that material. So falling behind would be uh, you saying, all right, I'll accept my C- and I'll just start fresh with Chapter 4. I'm like, hey, I'm going to start fresh. I'm just going to move on. And I'm going to just hope to do better in this next chapter. And I'll just accept that bad grade. And my plan is I'll do well. And these chapters will compensate for that. That doesn't happen. Okay. Just telling you right now, that's not going to be the case because this chapter here is going to come haunt you later through the rest of these courses. Math builds upon itself. So I'm just telling you right now, every chapter is important. So you, uh, the way you don't fall behind is if you get a bad chapter test or something like, like that, you go to your teacher and you're like, hey, um, I need extra help. I got to fix this. And maybe they'll um, have mercy on you and let you to get some partial credit and to raise your grade. You certainly should ask. Ask your teacher. Now, that's something I don't have in, in here, but ask your teacher, can I make up this? Can, can, can I do something about this grade? You know, if I demonstrate that I understand the material, okay? You have to understand the material, all right? And that's what I mean by never falling behind. I don't care if you gotta get a tutor, you gotta sign up for my program, you gotta do whatever you gotta do. You got to, uh, you know, not only understand it, but you're gonna um, benefit yourself if you can show your teacher that you understand it. Though oftentimes, believe me, teachers are kind of soft-hearted uh, people, at least I am, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of a sucker for a student, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, can, uh, 
you know, can I make up a little bit? Like, ah, or you should, first of all, show me that you understand. Show me you're working hard. Show me you're doing all the right things. And maybe I'll see what I can do about tweaking your grade. Okay. But that's what I'm talking about. You just can't accept a bad uh, test or a big gap in uh, the course and just leave it as is and hope that things will get better. You cannot fall behind. All right. This will come back and haunt you. All right, let's move on to our next item. Oops, kind of over here. Let's just show you what the last two are because they kind of highlighted. Is get your teacher feedback, okay? And what I mean by that, um, and we'll talk about this overstudying here in a second, but get teacher feedback. Um, that means that, hey, uh, talk to your teacher, okay? If you're not sure how well you're doing or even if you're doing well, ask your teacher, hey, how, how's things going? Is there, is there, like, what can I improve? You know, um, I'm taking notes. I'm feeling pretty good. And they can oftentimes tell you like, well, you know, if you, you know, you need to work on this area or, you know, be paying attention to X, Y, Z. I see that you do this. But if you don't ask your teacher, you're not going to get uh, more feedback other than your test and quiz grades or maybe like, you know, progress reports or whatever the case is. So talk to your teacher like you reach out to them, even if things are going well. Hey, how do you think I'm doing? You know, is there any areas I can improve? And they're like, no, you're doing good. This is coming up. Pay attention to this. Now, if you're struggling, you absolutely need to do this because your teacher is going to say, uh, well, let me take a look at your notes. You need to do better here. Um, your homework isn't. You missed a lot of homework. Um, and you have a couple bad chapter tests. So when you get feedback, oftentimes your teacher will give you kind of a prescription to improve and get back on track. And the question you need to ask is, how can I pass your class with an A from, you know, is it possible to still get an A in your class and your teacher say, yes, but you need to do this, this, and this, and then really study to do, you know, to, to do this well on these future tests. So almost always your teacher will tell you what you have to do uh, in order to either get an A or maintain your A, but don't get comfortable and be seeking feedback. All right. That leads us to our last point, and that is to uh, overstudy. And I've seen this time and time again, especially with students who, who do well. Okay, those students who are like take great notes, doing all the homework, uh, you know, have uh, shown in previous tests that they're doing excellent. And you know, maybe they didn't really come to me uh, for feedback, but let's say they're doing all the right things. But then they get a little too comfortable. And they're like, oh, I got this, I got this, chapter four. They get a little, mm, what's it, complacent. That's the word I'm looking for. And they just kind of study a little bit, da, 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 da. And guess what ends up happening? They uh, don't do well, okay? I've seen this where top students, um, students that I know can uh, ace algebra with an A+, plus, but they just get complacent or distracted or some other situation, and they don't really, you know, um, put in the time they need to for a particular test, and then they end up getting a bad test grade. That happens quite frequently. So the only way you can kind of compensate that is to, I, th I think, is to have an attitude that, hey, you're going to, whatever you think it's going to take to study for this test, if it's uh, like one hour, like, okay, I need an hour to study for this test, mm, try to double it, okay? Like, you know, like uh, give yourself two hours. You know, give yourself more time, okay? Really think about it because these tests matter, whether especially like final exams and things like that. So overstudy, never study to the point where you think that it's just enough. Like, mm, if I just do this, I'll be fine. If you have this um, kind of formula in your head that says, okay, uh, this is how much I think I need to study for. And you just, and if you can double it now, of course, I know you're busy. You got other classes and you got other things going on, but uh, this is why you have to be efficient. Okay. You really have to be efficient with your time, but, but the bottom line is this, okay? If you just do the bare minimum in terms of studying, it's going to show what the results are going to show up in your test. You're going to get minimal results. Even if you're doing all the right things, you're going to get like 80s, okay? Maybe like 85% or 83%, 86%. In order to do like 95% on exams, you got to really know your stuff cold, okay? And the only way it's going to happen, uh, you have to, you know, compensate it's almost like an insurance policy by overstudying and quite frankly when you overstudy what you're really doing is studying just the right amount 
okay? So if you want to know how much you study for a test, if you overstudy, that's how much you need to be studying for to ensure your grades, okay? All right, so I know I gave you some areas that are, seem like common sense, that they seem kind of simple, but believe me when I tell you these are not, uh, the concepts are simple, but they all, but this involves uh, daily work and discipline, okay, and having those strong academic habits. But um, if you're out there and you have this anxiety with mathematics, you can significantly compensate, uh, you know, for that and do very, very well by, you know, following these major areas, okay? And if any, you know, if you follow four of these, but you, you know, and you, and you're, you know, uh, don't do one of these, then, you know, that can get you in trouble. You kind of need to do all these. You can't, like, do all the homework, but don't take great notes, okay? Or take great notes, do all the homework, but barely study for tests. You see what I'm saying? You got to do all these things, but it's just what you need to do as a student, okay? And, and quite frankly, it's the things you need to be doing in, in life, okay? Because remember, you're taking a course, you're in school. But guess what? What's that for? Well, it's prepare, it's for, you know, getting you ready, preparation for the real world, okay? Which is like a career or a job or anything. In life, you know, this is pretty much is the same thing, okay? You got to pay attention to the little stuff because the big stuff is made up of all these little things, all right? Okay, so hopefully, you know, you found this video some uh, help. And if you enjoyed it, and to some slight degree, please consider smashing that like button. I would definitely um, appreciate that. Also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I um, already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos uh, on my channel. I do things like this, you know, in terms of study tips and motivation, but I also uh, obviously solve and, you know, teach on very specific math uh, topics. So I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. Uh, so that's a resource for you. But if you want my best uh, stuff, follow the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in algebra and all your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.